Greetings for the Watford fans. Omar here, and it's time for the Yawns 10 minute take on Watford 2, Millwall 2 at the Vic today. What a pulsating last few minutes of this game. A Watford side coming in three unbeaten, looking for their third consecutive win to make it four unbeaten and three wins on the spin. But Watford today had a very different type of game, although they got off to a very good start. They had in their starting lineup, Ken Semmer, well-deserved. Espria starting, well-deserved. Both of these players earned their starting stripes. And Ken Semmer dislodged Matthias Martins as the starter on the left side in that front three as Watford got underway today with a renewed purpose and attitude following the first away win in almost 10 months just a few days ago at Swansea. And they started off on the right foot after just seven minutes, Espria. Uh, through his relentless endeavor and persistence and an excellent game from Ido Kayembe, persisted and scored a ball that Kayembe shot straight at the goalkeeper who parried it out. Defender tried to clear it and cleared it straight into the path of Espria, who it knocked off of and smashed straight into the back of the net. The ricochet went in, Watford up 1-0, and Watford got the early dividends for their pressure and ball movement in the first few minutes of this game. But Watford could not game manage the remaining, or at least the next five to 10 minutes, because within the next five or six minutes of that stretch, Millwall would score a poorly conceded free kick, a poorly, um, really a poor set piece um, from a Watford perspective. It wasn't for Millwall. And Millwall were able to head the ball into the back of the Watford net, really, with no defensive pressure. The closest player to the goal scorer for Millwall was Jake Livermore, who turned and tried to put his leg out. But by then, it was already too late. And it was an easy stooping header to make it 1-1. And Millwall really didn't even deserve that. I don't think Millwall did enough in the game up to that point to get themselves level. But Millwall certainly served notice that they were not going to be easy. Millwall, always a very difficult opponent to play. And Watford have found that out over the last few years. The last time Watford had beat Millwall, it was the 1-0 victory on April the 24th of 2021, if you remember that. And how could you not? That was, of course, the COVID season, if you will. No fans at the Vic to celebrate the promotion that resulted from that 1-0 win, a penalty spot goal from Mr. Saar, who scored that only goal of that game to defeat Gary Rowett and Millwall on that day. Gary Rowett, no longer the Millwall manager, but Millwall did not change in their doggedness and their persistence in this game, despite the fact that Watford outplayed Millwall for large parts of the game, were much more comfortable at home. This is the most comfortable I've seen Watford at home since those first two home games this season against Queen's Park Rangers and against Plymouth. And Watford moved the ball quicker. I thought they moved the ball well. I thought the decision-making was a lot sharper and a lot better in general from all of the lads today. I thought the commitment was there. They looked hungry, looked energetic. They looked like they had a lot of spirit to them, a team spirit as well. Loved the interlinked play between Semmer and Lewis. I thought Lewis was terrific today. Ken Semmer, excellent once again. And I really loved Ido Kayembe for me, even though they got the draw today. It was the Yawns man of the match for me. If there was going to be one, it would have been Ido Kayembe. I thought he was superb. Probably his best game in a Watford shirt. He's had a one or two other games where he's been a flat out brilliant. This was one of them today. I thought his relentless persistence and his ability to win the ball back, recycle possession and keep going forward was always a threat. He had a few shots on target, at least one of them on target and two others, I think, flew over the bar or flew just wide. But this is the kind of commitment and purpose that Ido Kayembe has when he's in this lineup. And I think the, the players in general built a renewed sense of purpose and unity on the pitch today against a troublesome Millwall side who did go close with a couple of uh, warning shots. And Watford, though, should have had another goal of their own. I think Espria would be very unlucky not to have had a second goal in that first half. He shot the ball. It was going in the back of the net. But for some reason, I don't know how it happened. It was a goal. The goalkeeper for Millwall got his hand to the ball and tipped it away. I don't know how he did it, but that should have been 2-0 Watford at that point or 2-1 Watford at that point. 
And then I think had Watford scored again in that first half, they would have probably gone on to win this game. Watford should have won this game. Now, this game reminded me a little bit of the game just a few weeks back against West Bromwich Albion. I think that was back in September when Watford were down after taking an early lead. Remember, Tom Ince scored a goal very early at the Vic. Uh, sublime bit of skill from him to give Watford a 1-0 lead in that game. And then West Brom came back with two goals in succession, really quick goals. And within, you know, literally 10 minutes of the Watford lead, Watford were trailing. And then Martin scored on the 23rd minute to make it 2-2. And that was the way the game stayed. This game kind of had a little feel of some of that game uh, to it. Although Watford left it much, much later than 23 minutes to get an equalizer in this game. Try roughly 70 minutes later in the 93rd minute or thereabouts when Watford, who had trailed in this game, a poorly conceded set piece again from Watford against a team that loves set pieces in Millwall um, to make it 2-1. And Daniel Batman had a shaky five minutes who, despite that, he was good overall, but he had a shaky five minutes there uh, in that second half. But Watford were resilient. They found character. They dug deep and got that goal. They, as I said, 70 minutes later than the one against West Brom when they scored in the 23rd minute. They scored roughly in the 93rd minute the triple change happened. Val brought on three players, including Loser and Martins. And I thought that that change took a while to get hold in the game. I thought that the change actually bogged things down for Watford. And Millwall grew in confidence, began to play probably their best football of the day for about 15 minutes or so and came close with some warning shots at Watford. But really, it was that 93rd minute goal from, uh, from Rajovic, who really was the key there, but it was Loser, one of the other changes on the pitch, who came in, stood the ball up, really nice cross. It floated perfectly for Rajovic, who got his head, head on the end of it and put it into the back of the net, past the Millwall goalkeeper, who I don't think really was a big deal today. The Millwall goalkeeper today, he had that really good save uh, against Aspria, but generally to me did not distinguish himself. He too looked shaky. In fact, he looked shaky for a lot more of the game than the five minutes that Daniel Batman looked a little bit shaky. And I thought that the Millwall goalkeeper really did not perform very well in this game overall. But Rajovic got the goal for Watford, thank goodness, to equalize the game at two in the injury time in the 93rd minute or thereabouts. And that's really good character from Watford, who really shouldn't have ever trailed in this game. It was the defensive play that really hurt them in those two moments. Those two set pieces seemed to be switched off a man able to roam in and score and a free header as well. Really no excuse for that. And the second goal as well, straight, straight down straight down the middle, I think it was. It went into the back of the net. Daniel Batman, I think, lost his bearings on that one and uh, could not get, I don't know what happened there, but he just lost his bearings and the goal went in and the ball went into the back of the net. And that was that for for that but Watford did show character and resilience and coming back they were down 2-1 a lot of times we've seen this over the last few years Watford would not have come back from that last season against Moore certainly they would have lost that particular game today but they didn't they came back got the goal 2-2 and then kicked on to try to get a third but it wasn't to be but this is the kind of draw this kind of battle back that gives you resilience and confidence and I think Watford now Four games unbeaten have found that rhythm, have found that continuity, are beginning to show you more confidence. The game management wasn't quite as good today as it had been these last two or three games. But certainly there's no issue about lack of discipline. Granted, there have been some silly yellow cards even today, but the lack of discipline really wasn't there in the game phases that we'd seen from Watford a lot of times from this men's first team. But overall, Watford, I think, have given a very robust performance today at the Vic. It's one of their best ones of the season since those first two games of the season at the Vic. And I think that their continuity and their character are really showing in a lot of these games now, particularly the game today, today the game against West Brom when they trailed in that game as well. I think Watford is showing you some character and the game against Cardiff just before the international break when they trailed in that game and got an equalizer. And so Watford now are finding ways to get points from positions where they are losing, which is an important sign for this team as they begin to build composure, identity, and a sense of balance. And I thought this lineup today with Ken Semmer starting and Espria starting and the midfield where it was with the K and K brothers Kone and Kayembe, and then Livermore holding, 
gives you more structure and stability in that midfield, more continuity. These players begin to get a rhythm. Lewis was excellent again today. Jamal Lewis left back. As I said, the connection between he and Ken Sema, who was brilliant again. These things are the kinds of things you bed into this squad. You grow into the structure and nucleus of a team, a team that trusts each other. Earlier on this season, I had talked about the fact that I don't think that these players on the pitch trust each other enough. And I think they're beginning to do that now over these last four games where they've been unbeaten. There is a sense of continuity. There is a sense of commitment and trust to the team cause. There is a sense of uh, uh, going for the game and not settling for it and not taking your foot off the gas. Watford kept going. They weren't satisfied with just getting to 2-2. Two -two. They weren't satisfied with the 1-0. They had to keep driving and they were unfortunate not to keep going forward and get that goal when they really needed to get ahead again in the game. But the bottom line is, is that you take out of this performance a good performance, a solid performance, definitely an improvement over the last Saturday against Sheffield Wednesday and certainly con the continuity of this performance along with this Swansea performance from midweek gives you more confidence and belief and gives you more of an identity. Val is definitely building and identity and structure and it seems that the lads are finally beginning to take to that exhibiting confidence exhibiting skill the final third was a lot better today the quality needed to step up and i think it did overall i thought that jeremy and was excellent again today he's had another good game in a row he has to keep starting these games jeremy and has to keep starting i mean it's just clear as I said many times here on this youtube channel that this was going to be the make or break season for Jeremy Ngake, that this is really his last chance, in my view, his last chance to show and prove what he can do. And all the injuries that got in his way, unfortunately, and all the, um, the tough moments and some of the mistakes that he'd made in some of these games were the things that were leading him, uh, were leading ahead of him. But his play this season has been excellent. I, I think he's been flawless pretty much maybe one game where he wasn't at his best, but every game he's been in this season, I think with maybe one or two exceptions, he's been brilliant. So it, Ryan Andrews is going to have to be watching a lot of these games from the bench because Jeremy Ngakia, you know, he has absolutely been, I think his best for Watford so far this season. And that, uh, you know, that continues today. No exception to that today either. He's been brilliant, Jeremy Ngakia, and he must stay where he is. I think the team as it is now, starting these games looks a lot more solid bio i thought got into the game at times drifted out of it at other times he worked so hard though and as he always does he does not let the fact that he's not got a goal or got into the flow of the game stop him from doing things off the ball that are effective he passes the ball to his teammates he tries to build up the play and he links up well I think bio has built a relationship with the with the other forward through two in the forward three and I think he's been very good. But bottom line is your heroes today, and I would say Reese Healy is a hero. He cleared the ball with a header um, onto the crossbar uh, that looked like Millwall would go up 3-1. Reese Healy is definitely someone you've got to look at as an important contributor. I think you also have to look certainly at Ken Sema, certainly at Jeremy Ngakia, certainly at Jake Livermore, settled down that midfield. Kayembe was excellent today. He'd be my man of the match, the Ewan's man of the match. And you saw Jamal Lewis continue to play very, very well indeed. So it was another team effort. Watford, unlucky not to get all three points. But I think Millwall will be much more disappointed with this result than we will. And I think at the end of the day, if you look at the character of Watford and the identity that you've been to see with this men's team, it's really encouraging, at least now when we've got four games unbeaten. It's on to Hud Huddersfield next week, and we will see what happens there. This has been. The Yuan's 10-minute take.